Inside Science. This video is from the future, or at least what SpaceX CEO Elon Musk hopes the future will look like. In 2020, many scientific projects will come to fruition, and among them are SpaceX's plans to launch the first manned commercial flight to the International Space Station. On board will be astronauts Doug Hurley and Bob Behnken, and they could be forgiven for being a little nervous. When SpaceX tried out their manned spaceship in April last year, it exploded. That explosion came from a leaky valve, and Elon and the astronauts will be hoping that valve has been fixed by their next test date, January the 11th, 2020. Now, Boeing also planned to send people to space this year in their Starliner spacecraft, but their last unmanned test flight failed to reach the International Space Station because of a faulty onboard clock. Godspeed all the astronauts out there. Rather you than me. In fact, maybe we should just use robots. In 2020, three new robotic rovers from Europe, China, and the US will be headed into space. Destination, Mars. Each rover will search for signs of ancient life on the red planet. NASA's Mars 2020 rover, launching July or August this year, is aiming for the Jezero Crater, site of an ancient lake. If it makes it, the rover will analyze the local rocks and chemicals for signs of past life, then carefully store some of those rocks to be brought back to Earth sometime in the future. As well as searching for aliens, the mission will start preparing Mars for its own alien invasion. The rover carries instruments to test Mars's potential habitability. These include radar for locating water underground, sensors for measuring temperature, humidity, wind, dust, and radiation, and finally, MOXIE. This is the Mars Oxygen in Situ Resource Utilization Experiment, a unit that sucks in the plentiful carbon dioxide in the Martian atmosphere, splits off the oxygen through solid state electrolysis at 800 degrees Celsius, then stores the oxygen as a liquid. And this newly formed oxygen could be used for breathing, or possibly for fuel. Fuel that we'll need if we ever want to get those carefully stored rocks back to Earth. But another space mission to look out for this year gave its space rocks a return ticket. And by the end of 2020, the Hayabusa 2 spacecraft will hopefully return to Earth from the asteroid Ryugu, carrying the extraterrestrial samples that it excavated last year. But while we search the solar system for alien life, on Earth, we're making synthetic life. 2020 should see the completion of the Yeast 2.0 project. Now, Yeast 2.0 might sound like an embarrassing infection, but it's in fact a consortium of 11 labs across the world working together to streamline and partially replace the entire genome of Baker's yeast, the most heavily studied complex single-celled organism on the planet. Now, such so-called synthetic cells have been constructed before, even synthetic bacteria. But this will be the first time a eukaryotic cell has been attempted, cells which are far larger and more complicated than bacteria. Now, the changes to yeast's DNA should increase its stability, but also allow the DNA to be shuffled around on demand to create and test new strains. But trying to build a whole new genome for such a complicated cell hasn't been easy. Tiny changes have often led to huge, unanticipated problems. But each new hurdle teaches us something about how different parts of the genome interact. And when yeast 2.0 is finished, it should pave the way for new synthetic organisms as part of the technology of the future. But what about gene editing in humans? Well, this time last year, Chinese scientist He Zhangqi edited the genome of twin baby girls in an attempt to decrease their risk of HIV. In 2020, Russian scientist Denis Rebrikov wants to do the same thing with the same gene. Now, this has provoked outcry from the international community, but the real sticking point is the Russian government. This year, they will decide if Rebrikov is legally allowed to go ahead. And what of Hei Zhangqi? Well, 2020 does not look good for him. The Chinese government have just handed down a three-year prison term for illegal medical practices, despite the actual law being rather vague. Well, this is just a taste of what science projects to look out for in 2020, but the biggest effect on global science could be political. The outcome of the 2020 US election. Now, we will know the results just days before the COP26 meeting, where global leaders will decide how serious they really are about battling climate breakdown. America's next president 
could well decide the fate of the planet. Classic. And that's it from me. I'll see you in a month for a roundup of January's science stories. But for now, goodbye. Inside Science. If you enjoyed this edition, follow us on the web and social media. Powered by the American Institute of Physics and a coalition of underwriters.